Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mysteries Unknown. On tonight's podcast, I've got Ralph with me, and Ralph had a Class A encounter with Bigfoot when he was just a kid in Mental, Tennessee. This thing popped up right side of his window. I'm gonna let him jump into that in just a second, but before I do that, if you have a mystery or something you wanna share with me, you can reach me by email at video at justcreativeAR.com. Ralph, welcome to the show. Thank you. So we've been talking a little bit about this encounter. Why don't you take us all the way back, kind of tell us where it happened at and walk us through the encounter. I was uh, living with my family in middle Tennessee. I was about 10 or 11 at the time. My father had uh, purchased a nine and a half acre plot of land and had cleared it all off uh, except for a few select trees. And uh, uh, we lived in a uh, mobile home that was situated on a, on a hillside. And uh, my bedroom was situated uh, at the end and uh, where the, uh, the trailer was uh, supported by stilts. So this made my window roughly about eight, nine feet off the ground. Uh, and one night I was, uh, you know, alone sleeping. My brother was out. Uh, we shared the bedroom. My brother was out with uh, some of his friends, and uh, my bed was situated sort of off angle from the uh, from the window. Uh, I was awakened by uh, some scratching on the uh, on the window, and at first I thought it was my brother. You know, he got locked out of the house or something, but. Uh, I got up on, on the bed on my knees and uh, had parted the curtains from my window and I was staring uh, right at a, uh, a face which I now uh, identify as a uh, as Bigfoot. Uh, he was right up against the window and so was I. So we were separated only by a partition glass. And, uh, I don't know how long we've uh, stared at each other. I, I know now that I was in, sh in shock. And uh, I'm, what I do recall is that uh, he wasn't looking any kind of fierce. Uh, he was illuminated partially by the uh, street light that we had at the far end of the uh, trailer. And uh, I can't remember if there was a moon on that night. But uh, I can see him enough to recognize some facial features, a nose, eyes, uh, you know, he wasn't snarling at me or growling or anything like that. It was just quiet, just looking at each other. Uh, the next thing I remember is that uh, he turned around and uh, walked off and uh, there was a good couple hundred yards before he got to the road and, and the woods was on the other side of the road and he disappeared into it. Uh, I, I remember uh, getting back down on my bed and laying down and uh, I wasn't able to sleep for the, for the next two nights. Uh, after that, I don't, I don't think we were ever uh, visited again. And as a kid, I didn't think about looking for uh, footprints or tracks or anything like that. I just, like, I was scared to go outside for a while. I don't blame you. And that was a, a really scary encounter for a kid or for anybody. I mean, that's for to wake up with something looking at the window at you. Uh, for our audience, why don't you kind of describe the area and then maybe kind of describe some of the features, what you remember, kind of what it looked like in more detail if you can. Uh, the area... Uh, was situated in a, on a hilly uh, woodside, a lot of woods, uh, which my father had cleared away. He had planned to make it into a, uh, a farm. And, uh, you know, there, there was a paved, semi-paved road uh, going by the, by the property. Uh, it was roughly maybe about a, a good mile from the uh, the main highway, Highway 31, I believe it was, 31A. And 
you know, there, there weren't a lot of houses or any other properties until later. People started buying up, buying up land around our, uh, around our acreage. Uh, as far as the creature goes itself, I remember it had dark fur, dark eyes, uh, you know, dark skin. Uh, like I said, the illumination wasn't all that great, so I really couldn't tell you what color, if it was dark brown or if it was black or, uh, or what. Uh, you know, and I do remember, uh, you know, days, days later going by my window on the outside and looking up and then realizing just how tall that, that thing was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm estimating because his whole head filled the frame of the window. Uh, that's how I know he was right up against it. Uh, so he must have been a good eight, ten feet tall, maybe. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, it was just big. Yeah, massive. I mean, that's that'd be pretty scary. And I know that you said for a while you couldn't sleep, but how do you think that affected you the rest of your life? It makes me nervous when I camp out, and I do love camping, uh, it, but it makes me nervous to camp out by myself uh, because over the years my hearing. Uh, had gotten worse over, over the years, and uh, so I don't hear everything that's going on outside my tent. Uh, you know, and, and it takes me a while to fall asleep when I'm out camping by myself. When I'm with other people, then you know, I, I trust to them that they'll hear something, and uh, you know, and I don't really speak about this encounter uh, very often because. Of the, uh, I've had some people tell me, ah, I'm full of it. And when, well, with the friend that I have, they'll take advantage of it and they'll try to, they'll try to do something to scare me. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I'm not into that. Well, I don't blame you. And it takes a lot of guts to talk about something like this, you know? I mean, it was a pretty traumatizing thing. And I could imagine it would change anybody's view on the woods or, or how they were when they were alone outside in the woods, you know, because, I mean, what you know that this thing is real and it's out there, that's life-changing. I mean, I, I, I see a lot of people uh, online, uh, you know, they're, they're posting their, their photos and all that, and because I know that this creature is real, I mean, because I, I have seen it uh, literally face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, I can, and I'm... I remember watching uh, In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. Uh, he was showing the Patterson Gimlin film, and that brought it all back. And I was just like, oh, yeah. You know, because the walk, I remember from him walking away and then watching Patty walk away from uh, Patterson. Uh, it, was just, it was just too close, you know, for it not to be anything else. I know that was really traumatizing for you, and, and as a kid, to see something like that, it really makes you question a lot of things, and I would be terrified. But with all that being said, what do you think it wanted to come in and look in your window like that? What do you think it wanted? I just think it was just curious, uh, because it, it did happen after we uh, placed the, uh, the trailer on the property. Uh, and... So I, I believe it was just mainly curious. It's like, what is this big metal thing? And uh, the dog didn't even uh, do anything. I think the dog was probably scared it worse than I was. It didn't even bark or anything. I can imagine. I'm sure it was. So what do you uh, what do you think Bigfoot is, Ralph? I, there's not really a wrong answer. Nobody really knows. But what do you what do you think it is? Uh, I believe it is a very large. Uh, primate uh, I don't really think that it's a hybrid human and everything can genetically uh, human interbreeding with uh, animals uh, even even primates is, it, it just wouldn't work so I believe it's just a, a very large unspecified uh, type of primate well that's a that's a good answer I mean it makes a lot of sense I mean nobody 
really knows, but it's definitely a mystery and that's kind of the fun of it, you know, for me. But would you want to see it again if you had the opportunity? I now live in Utah and I know that Utah has had a number of sightings and I'm a caver by, uh, uh, not by profession, I used to do it for a living, but uh, I've been caving for a very long time and this gets me out into the deep woods uh, quite a bit because that's where the caves are at. And, uh, you know, if I don't know what I would do if I saw one again. Uh, I don't think I would be as scared uh, because I, if I understand primate behavior, even if they, uh, they charge at you, it's mostly could be like a bluff charge. And if you run, well, then it just may pursue you even further, but to stand up to it, if that's possible, if I could do it, I don't know. Uh, you know, it just may pull up short. And, you know, I remember reading one story where a guy was uh, accosted by one. He was in a boat and it was on the shore and it was waving him away, you know, making waving motion like go away go away or something so i don't know it's it's hard to say nobody knows what they'll do at any given time in any given yeah. circumstances i think they're a lot like people you know you run into good people you run into bad people depends on what you run into that day um and you know i think there's a lot of stories about bluff charges and i think that it's pretty interesting to me and i think if you stand your ground that's probably the best thing to do uh, because you definitely would bluff charge you. And if you stand your back off, you're going to be like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to run from it. That's the, that's the last thing you want to do. But, uh, well, I just wanted to say, man, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I really appreciate that. And uh, thanks for the time and, and just sharing that with our audience. Happy to happy to contribute, uh, you know, because I know these things are real. And uh, they're very, very elusive. And that means that they got to be very intelligent uh, even even for a primate uh, so they know how to s conceal themselves i think a couple of them are just oops i got caught i think so man i think that happens quite a bit a lot of them a lot of them get caught somehow you know and that's why people are seeing them but uh they are definitely smart, very intelligent. Well, Ralph, I appreciate you so much for sharing that story with me. I know our audience is really going to enjoy that. I'm glad you made it through that night, and I'm glad you were okay. But uh, I appreciate you again sharing that with me. And it takes a lot of guts to come up forward and, and share something like that. So thanks again for doing that. But guys, if you have a mystery or something you want to share with me, you can reach me by email at video at jscreativear.com. And like I always say, stay prayed up. We'll talk soon.